Alright, so we just left Giovanni's house and we want to fall into the waterway. And as soon as you come to the ground, you'll find this little area where there are a ton of rats. And it's almost like a little fountain in here. I like how there's the little <laughs> rats that are dog paddling in the water. They're like chilling out over here. Anyways, you want to head over to the north side where you will find a lever that you can pull. So jump to it and then pull it down and this will allow you to fall down into the flowing water which will take us all the way down into this new area. You want to swim to shore and once you run forward you'll be confronted by two scatulas. Unfortunately we cannot use Minda's attack on these scatulas and they guard from the front often. So you have to use uh, you know, Z-target and jump around to get to their backside where they are vulnerable. So you want to smack at their sides or, or their back and then once you get past their defenses then just keep fighting away until you defeat them. Up ahead there is a spider web that we're going to have to burn through, and luckily there is a lit torch down here, so grab the stick that is nearby and use it to light the spider web. Once you burn through here you want to run forward, and there are several other torches up ahead. So you want to light them, and here I'm going to light my other side actually, because uh, otherwise the other side might go down, but uh, light all the torches in this room, and then you want to set down the, the stick, and you can uh, kill the keys that are in this room. So do so, and they might cause you some problems, but they shouldn't be too hard. Uh, you'll probably take a little bit of damage. But you'll notice that up ahead, uh, there is another spider web. We're going to have to burn that one down as well. So pick up the stick, uh, one of the sticks in this area. There are actually several down here. Odd. <laughs> pick up one of the sticks, light it against one of these torches over here, and then you'll be able to use it to burn down the spider web. So allow us access into this new area. You want to run through here, just ignoring the enemies and such along the way. Uh, continue on into this little room that's all circular. You'll see there's like a darker spot here in the middle. So uh, you want to use your senses and you'll see that it is actually like all speckly and shiny. So it, this indicates that we can dig through it. You can also smack the skulls and stuff that are in this room to get some recovery hearts and such as well. So you will fall down into this familiar area of the waterways that we've actually been in before while well, it was covered with twilight. You can run around if you like, but you know our objective is to just simply start climbing this spiral staircase once again. This time around, it's actually there's bulbins that are filling the area, and I suppose they're the, the ones that set up all these ropes all over the place so we could get, so they could get back and forth. Uh, but that's a good thing because we can't use Minda to jump up the steep ledges right now. So. Anyways, these bulbins can be pretty annoying uh, because they, if you're not careful, you know, you'll try and smack into them and you'll totally like jump off the ledge so and fall all the way down. So that's pretty annoying. However, if you do fall, occasionally Link will like grab onto one of the ropes that are below you and he'll actually pull himself back onto the rope. So it's kind of nice. Even if you do fall, you might land on one of the ropes and then you'll be okay. You want to continue working your way up and eventually you'll get to some bulbins that are actually like just the other side of the rope. So you're going to have to like Z-target them while still on the ropes, and then press A to jump at them. You have to distance yourself out just right so that you know you don't fall off, uh, because you can also like knock into the stone ledge. So like this one up ahead, for example, I'm going to actually jump to him. So here you Z-target them. Once you get a good distance away, you jump, but still you know you're far enough away that they can't smack you with their club, but close enough that you can still land on top of the ledge. So this is the one where it's really necessary. You have to do it otherwise, like they'll totally fall off. So once you get all the way up to the top, you'll find yourself in this little area with a uh, Bulbin Archer and three keys. And so I recommend taking out the, uh, the Bulbin Archer first, um, so that way you can worry about the keys so it's not shooting at you the whole time, and then take them out the final time. Up here you'll also notice that there are those two doors. One of them is still open up top, but we can't get up there, but the lower one is now open conveniently, so head on through. So once outside on the wall, you'll find two more bulblins. Uh, you want to be careful not to fall off the ledge yourself when attacking them, as that would not really be the brightest thing we want to do. Up ahead, you'll come to that corner where we saw the soldier spirit earlier when we were here in the twilight. Um, but and he was mentioning how Hyrule Castle is being overrun by monsters, uh, but he's not there anymore. So later on, we actually see several soldier ghosts uh, around here, and I assume that he is one of them because he's not here anymore. There weren't bulblins here before, but now there's tons of them all over the place. So I would, would think that they actually killed him. There's also several spirits in that uh, in that sewer area we just came from. There used to be a bunch of spirits, but there are no soldiers down there right now, so I think they're dead as well. Up ahead, there's a Kargarok, and we actually tackled this area earlier, and there was a Shadow Kargarok there last time, uh, but it's a regular one now. You can defeat it if you like, then head to the south, and um, now it's really windy in this area, and occasionally it blasts really fiercely through here, so you can use the wind to our advantage. There's a bridge here that's disconnected, but you can run along it when the wind's blowing. So climb up to the next ledge to the south, and you can smash the crates here to get a purple ruby, which is worth 50. We'll be getting a ton of rupees in this chapter, so if you are not close to having a full wallet already, you will be before too long. Work your way north and wait for the next bridge to start blowing this direction, and then you can use it to get to the far north platform. From here you want to aim off to the right and jump onto the roof. There's a cargo rock up here, which you can kill if you like, but I'm just going to ignore it. 
Once again, you want to follow the path until you get to the window. Once inside, you just want to hop down and then follow the stairs upwards at long last to enter the doors at the top where, uh, to enter the room where they've been keeping Princess Zelda. So as we enter, it will uh, initiate a very long cutscene. Link is looking around for the princess. Meanwhile, Minda will fall off his back, apparently too weak to hold on any longer. Um, suddenly, Zelda is there by the door, checking on Minda. So she came up from behind them, so through the door. So does this mean that Zelda came from downstairs? Like, I guess if they like take her away every once in a while to question her or whatever, then they let her back up every once in a while to go back to her rooms on her own. I didn't see any guards with her this time, you know. <laughs> Minda asks the princess to help help Link and break the curse that binds him in wolf form, so she says that he is the one that she needs. Zelda will then put out her left hand and attempt to use the Triforce of Wisdom to remove the crystal that was absorbed into Link in his confrontation with Zant. Zelda then explains that Link is transformed due to an evil magic as opposed to the Blanket of Twilight that originally turned him into a wolf, so it's a, on an entirely new level this time. She goes on to say, however, that because we live in a world of balance, there is light that can uh, push out the darkness that has cursed him. She says. Uh, she tells you to go to the Sacred Grove, which is in the Farron Woods, uh, where you can find the legendary Master Sword. In most of the titles, there is a legendary blade found about halfway through the game called the Master Sword, which is crazy good against the bad guys and can cut through spells and barriers and such that you normally would not be able to get past. It's one of the trademarks of the Zelda series, and at the end of each game that does have this mystical blade, uh, it is laid to rest to be found by another hero later on. So that being said, we are now going to go find this very same sword that has been used by the heroes of old in past Zelda titles. Zelda goes on to say that the Master Sword is the only thing that can repel this curse that has been placed upon you. She also mentions that, like Link, she also has been chosen by the goddesses, um, which she will then make the Triforce symbol on her left hand pulse. Um, it seems like she's going to say more, but Minna interrupts her, asking Link to go to the Farren Woods by himself. She then asks the princess a final favor by telling her to tell Link where to find the Mirror of Twilight. The music cuts out, signifying that this is something very crucial that Minna is asking. And uh, so after a moment, Zelda will say that everything that has happened, uh, Minda is looking out for their best interests of Hyrule, though Minda herself is the one who has been ganked in the end. <laughs> the princess then remarks that she thinks she finally understands just who and what Minda is, and we are, of course, still left in the dark at this point in the game as to what that means. So at this point, something very interesting happens. Uh, Zelda places both of her hands on one of Minda's and tells her that she passes something to her. She's rather vague about it. Her body then shines with a bright light and becomes particles that fuse into Minda's body. Minda yells out for Link to intervene, but of course he doesn't. <laughs> Princess Zelda then gives her a weak smile before becoming faint and finally disappearing. They aren't very specific about what's happening here, although it appears like Minda understands perfectly well. Now, Minda's sickness uh, seemed to originate just after she was forced into the world of light by Zant, um, and after Lineru, like teleported her, so I'm not sure if it was caused because she was touched by one of the light spirits and she's from the twilight, so, you know, opposites. But it seems like in this scene what's happening is that Zelda and Minda are in a sense trading places, so... Uh, and also, just an interesting thought is that what kept Zelda and Link from becoming spirits like everybody else in Hyrule Castle was, while Twilight covered the land was the fact that each of them held the power chosen by the gods. Um, that was what set them apart and made them different. That's why they didn't become spirits. Because Zelda is disappearing in the scene and Minda becomes you know, fully solid and is no longer all pale and pasty, it could very well mean she's actually giving Minda the Triforce of Wisdom. So Minda then backflips onto Link's back and voices to the room that she is taking everything from Zelda had to give. So. Uh, now, as I said earlier, it's a little vague about what's happening, um, so it could just be that Zelda's giving her some sort of life force temporarily, as opposed to the Triforce of Wisdom. Uh, however, you know, right after this, they in this next scene, then Twilight suddenly covers Hyrule Castle, and it just blankets the entire thing, and it's stuck there. Both Minda and, Twi and uh, Link, at this point, are not affected by the Twilight, because Link's already a wolf, and Minda now has whatever power that is that Zelda gave her. So if Zelda actually gave her the Triforce of Wisdom, that would explain why Zelda disappeared. So, uh, Minda will now clench her fist and everything and grind her teeth, and they, we will not be able to enter Hyrule Castle and get through that Twilight Barrier until much later. So with that, we are locked out, and we are, are kept from entering until much later in the game. Um, so that all being said, we will now gain control of Link, and the movie is finally over. You want to talk to Minda and warp over to the North Farren Woods to get to the Sacred Grove. So join me for the next video, and I will see you guys there.